Larry Blum is a Bronx-born L.A. resident who can act, dance, write, and sashay around at celebrity award shows without tripping on the red carpet. He also has the chutzpah to perform on stage all by himself. He has brought his one-man show, Blink and You Might Miss Me, to Vancouver for the Hootspaw Festival. It is my pleasure to welcome Larry Blum to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you, Fanny. So are you living the dream? When you were a little guy, were you fantasizing about fame and Hollywood yes. and Broadway? Yes, when I was growing up, I used to read all the movie magazines, and I devoured the TV guide from cover to cover, and I went to movies and theater, and I loved it. I always wanted mm. to be in show business. And didn't your dad drop you off at the Merv Griffin show, or did he go with you, no. or how did that work? Someone my, did. My dad worked for the New York Times, okay. which was right next door to the Little Theater in Manhattan, where the Merv Griffin show was. And every Friday, he would drop me off before the show, and after the show, he'd bring me back home. Yeah. <laughs> and did you like Merv Griffin? Did oh, you meet him, or did you I know met him? him? He was very nice, and I, mm -hmm. you know, he was very pleasant, but it was his guests. I mean, Carol Burnett was there. Uh, I remember getting Dion Warwick's autograph when I was a little kid, uh, Jack Douglas and Rako, he, Renee Taylor. I used to just go every week and just love seeing all these people in person. Mm. And now you actually do yes. see all these people. Yes. So your day job is uh, uh, a lot of things, I know. So you've uh, walked celebrities down the aisle at the award shows. Yes. I was very lucky a uh, number of years ago I was I was standing in on on different uh, award shows which is I don't know if people know that the uh, you know on when it's a live show reality shows do it also they have stand-ins rehearsal actors come mm. in and for days before we rehearse the show over and over again so the cameras and the directors can have a feel of where people sure. are entering and and then uh, Mr. Dick Clark he likes to have a gentleman in a tuxedo take the ladies to the stage. Other award shows, they don't mind if someone goes up the stairs and they trip and fall. That's live TV. <laughs> I see. Yeah, right. But he doesn't want to see that. He he thinks the dresses should be sh mm. shown off beautifully, and so they mm -hmm. hired me to just offer my elbow to them and take them up to the stage. So how many tuxedos do you have? Right now, I just have one that I use. Just one that you use. Okay, back to you. Uh, back to. <laughs> <laughs> Back to uh, uh, being a hoofer, uh, dancing. Who taught you to dance? Well, I started late for a dance. I started at 22. I was in New York. and That's I was, ancient it is, for a dancer. It is. I told everyone I was 20, so they wouldn't think I was crazy. Of course. So, every, you know, I was, I was hanging around New York to just graduate college. I had a degree in elementary education, which I never used. You would have been a good teacher. Yeah. I, I, uh -huh. You know, you do have that show business kind of feel sure. when you're in front of the kids. And I met, I met a whole bunch of gypsies, you know, Broadway dancers. Mm -hmm. And I, I started tagging along with them. And they, they said, come with us to dance class one day. And I just took a dance class, and I was pretty good. And next thing I know, I was taking three classes a day and voice lessons and acting lessons. And with a year, I was auditioning and started getting work. <laughs> hey, a miracle. Yeah. You must have some talent. I had a little talent. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I also had, I kind of had supportive parents. Mm. I had the unstereotypical Jewish parents who said, you want to do this? And I said, yeah. And he said, go for it. How great. You can do it. Have some gefilte fish. And you can do it. And put on those tap shoes. Exactly. So t is tap your thing? No, I can do it all. I can do jazz, ballet, right. tap. But you had a thing with Bob Fosse. I don't mean a thing. It was, but you met Bob Fosse, all that jazz. Yes. My first audition, because all the kids that I hung out with were all in Bob Fosse's shows. You know, they had done Pippin in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I got to audition for him a lot, but he never wow. really liked me, he, you know, as a dancer. He likes his women tall and leggy and his men kind of lean and, and sort of uh, effeminate. I think I was too butch for my own good. I see. Well, we're going to have to uh, girly you up, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, you've never lost that sense of wonder. So, uh, a Blink. Well, Blink this was, show, yes. what's behind it? Why is it called Blink and You Might Miss Me? Well, it comes from, you know, I, I was, you know, I, I have lines. I don't have lines. I, I work on all the daytime soaps, and I've done a lot of prime time. Sometimes, You've been on The Young and the Restless. Yes. I know because I watch Victor. <gasps> yes, I He's know. He's a great guy. I know everything. 
yeah, I do Young and Restless a couple of times a month. But you know, sometimes you, you know, I'd be in the background, and you know, if you blinked, you might have missed me. And then when um, the, the the idea for the show came was, I was the first time I escorted a beautiful lady to the stage. I think it was like the daytime Emmys, and I and I called my mother and I said, "Did you see me? Did you see me?" And she goes, "No, I was looking at the star." <laughs> so hence, blink, and you might mm -hmm. miss me. That's a good Jewish mama. Yes. Yeah, are you kidding? <laughs> yes. Did I see you? I wasn't watching out. For you. She was looking at the star. Looking at the star. And there's so many stars that you've walked down. Yes. Uh, is there one you like particularly or who's real? We all ponder, we who don't know them. You know, Meryl Streep has to be cool. Yes. She, and solid. She, she looks you right in the eyes and makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. Mm. She really connects with you. I think that's why she connects with so many people on screen, you know, in the audience on screen. Sure. And George Clooney's funny. Oh, he is so funny. He's got the, the funniest sense of humor. I was, you know, I worked with him on Roseanne. I know. He was the... Um, you name dropper, you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in the Wellman's Plastic Plague on Roseanne for a number of years, and he was our boss. He was a skinny, lanky little kid who knew he was mm. going to become the biggest male star in Hollywood. Yeah. And I ran into yeah. him at the Golden Globes one year, and I reminded him, you know, he meets so many people. I reminded him that we worked together, and he was so sweet, and... And he introduced me to Sandra Bullock. And really? we, he said, we both survived the contentious set of Roseanne. Mm. And Lily Tomlin. Lily, I toured Had with her. Had fun with her, toured with her. Yes. Lucy Arnaz. Oh, Lucy. Lucy, I did a show called Bye Bye Birdie with her. No. Yes. And, I love Lucy. And her mom came opening night, and she met all of us backstage. Mm. So I met Lucille Ball and got to hang with her a few years later. Wow. Wow, I think I interviewed Lucy Arnaz many moons ago on radio, and she was fun. She's fun Lovely, and she's talented. Solid. She's so talented. Mm -hmm. And with that mother, oh. hello. Uh, now back to Blink. Yeah. We, we're supposed to be talking about Blink. I know. You know. So this one one man show uh, at River Rock starts Wednesday, right? Wednesday night through Wednesday Sunday. Wednesday night through Sunday, part of the Hutzpah Festival. And tell me what you do. Well, it's basically, it's, it's sort of uh, chronologically sort of a look at my life and wonder and, and excitement about show business, growing up and loving show business, and then actually getting in it and actually meeting all of my childhood's mm -hmm. favorites and dreams and hopes and all these people that I wanted to be around. And so I tell all my little funny backstage stories, sort of being a little fly on the wall and being a, a little part of show business and sort of... Uh, fun, some dishy stories, you know, and yes. some things that you don't know about people. And, and so it's just my experiences from starting out as a dancer, getting into acting, becoming the on-camera talent escort, and sharing all those little backstage stories. And do you have to check with agents or stars or lawyers to do what you do? Because you, know, you are dishing yes. about famous well, people. Well, you know, most of the stuff I say is nice and it's kind. Mm. I mean, there's, there's a couple of little dishy stories and stuff, but you know, I love all these people. Even if they did something bad or, or you know, weren't on their best behavior behind the scenes, it still is, mm. they're still a star, you know? And, and uh, you know, I don't really, I don't think I get really mean about anybody. Right, I had a friend who was the very first radio broadcaster female for NBC. She married Shang Kai-shek's pilot, believe it or not. Her name was Janet Baird, and she interviewed Clark Gable. Mm. She's gone now, as you yes. can imagine, but Clark Gable and uh, Bing Crosby. And Bing would always show up half sloshed, mm. and they're doing live. <laughs> and she'd say, Mr. Crosby is like five sheets to the wind. <laughs> we won't be able to pull this off, I don't think. But she did, right? Of course. Yeah. And so did he, somehow. Well, a lot of the stuff, you know, is, is, you know, we're right in front of the camera, so it's all happening live half the mm -hmm. time. And I've worked with, you know, my first celebrity crush was Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, mine too. Oh, God. Butterfield 8. Oh. Or maybe before that. And oh, National Velvet, I guess, for me. When I was a kid, I, I heard she was uh, going to be in town for the Dr. Faustus premiere with Burton, and I stayed at the Plaza Hotel in the lobby waiting hours and hours just to catch a glimpse of her. And then eventually, later on in life, I think I was about 40 years old, she was introducing her third fragrance, Black Pearls. Right. And they did a big, 
big presentation for her and they hired a few dancers to do a big production number for her and I got to be one of the dancers and got to meet her after the show. And, and she what went, oh. was she like? She was, no, tell me about the eyes first. Oh, you know, I, I couldn't stop staring at her eyes. Mm. She was so beautiful. She was tiny though, you know. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was those days where they weren't wearing seven inch heels. Right. So, I mean, she was tiny. I was shocked at how small she was, like, you know, up close. But she was charming and sweet and gracious and beautiful. Just so yeah. beautiful. Uh, to, to the end, really. Uh, yes. What was her relationship with Michael Jackson, do you think? It was so unusual. I think because, you know, she was a child star also, you know. Yeah. So she grew up, you know, in the studio system being a child star. And I think she knew the pressures and demands of, of being in the public since you're a child. So I think she empathized mm -hmm, with probably. him. I, I, and the uh, HIV AIDS connection and the fundraising oh. connection and all of that, but they truly seemed, and again, I'm only regurgitating what I read in Hello Magazine. Yes. They truly seemed to uh, bond. Uh, bond and adore each other and were there for one another I and think, all of that. I just think she had a big heart, too. She's an angel, you know. Mm -hmm. What she did, for, like you say, for HIV AIDS, I mean, you know, no one did more than she right. did. Well, and rubbing shoulders with celebrity, as you know, can be uh, not dangerous, but really interesting. And when you see the tortured ones, yes, you know, on the drugs or checking into uh, Betty Ford once again, or yes. uh, you know, making a fool of yourself in front of the entire academy. Yeah, no, you know, I actually. Um uh, to be, you know, what's going on today. I actually worked with Whitney Houston a number of times. Oh. Yeah, in the beginning, you know, when she was just up and and beautiful, beautiful and, and, and sounded and, great. Yeah. And I actually worked with her her last two TV appearances in the states. And you know, she wasn't in the best of voice. Um, mm -hmm. She was still very sweet, and she was cooperative, you know, and everything. But her voice wasn't there, and you know, and that must have been a little frustrating too that she just didn't have the the, the 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 talent that she you know that she brought to everybody sure. so you know and what a gift and what a waste what a gift and what a gift it's sort of you know I'm just I'm sort of disappointed that she mm -hmm. let her voice go like that you know that was a treasure it, yeah and well look at Dionne Warwick I yes. mean it's in the genes I love somewhere in I Sissy. love D I love Dionne Warwick what don't you like about celebrity what's tough about it I the public eye it must be horrible. You can't go for dinner. You you can't live life outside the compound really, without people. Yeah, I you know. And paparazzi. Well, I you know I never I never really became a big A list celebrity, so you know I'm not recognized. Or you never any. know. <laughs> Although we were out we were out the other day and someone sort of recognized me, you know, and I thought that was kind of fun. But I never you know I didn't get into the business to be recognized. Mm -hmm. I just I I I liked celebrity. I mean, you know, uh, when when I did a chorus line, we became celebrities. I did chorus line the the, uh, the first year it had opened. I toured with it. Did you do chorus line here? I did it in here. In the city? Uh, yes, I did. I was at the closing party. I was. Th then we met it already. It was crazy. We did. At the Queen Elizabeth Theater. Yes, and they had a closing party after. Yes. I was with my friend, and and uh, my eyes were big. But when we toured, you know, the show had just opened and it was so big mm -hmm. and exciting. And so we were celebrities. It was the first time mm -hmm. I had ever gotten that sort of notoriety. And it was kind of great. I, you know, I'd, I'd go out and people, you know, because it was the number one show. So I'd go out and people would say, you're in a chorus line, aren't you? Right. So and who did you play? I played Gregory Gardner. Gregory He's Gardner. He's the gay Jewish boy from, mm -hmm. gay Jewish boy from the Bronx. Okay. Uh, once you're done, you're done all the way. No, that's West Side Story. <laughs> <laughs> no, chorus line. It was he was a, just a, the you know flamboyant gay Jewish dancer from the Bronx, mm -hmm. and actually one of the men who introduced me to dance. It was his life. I was playing his really? life. Really, I really yes. need this job. I've got to have this job. Yes. All of that. Well, you have a job. Thank the Lord. Uh, thank goodness, yes. Uh, and where are you touring this? Well, right, I just played, you know, Los Angeles. I, I was there for six months, and then I did San Francisco. Next, we're going to um, uh, Palm Springs. How great. And I'm going to do Provincetown in the summer. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go and do some cruises. Oh, fun. Yes. Oh, fun. And uh, then you probably lead somebody down the aisle at the Tony y Awards yes. or one of those. Or you the... went, were you with Tyne Daly? I saw you with Tyne Daly. Yes, yes. I worked the Tony Awards for nine years. I, did Ty I worked with Tyne Daly when she won that year for um, Gypsy. Right. Gypsy, she was right. wonderful. Okay, she was yeah. so kind. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've worked every award show on the planet. See, and you fill in for Simon Cowell, too. Yes, I work every reality show. I, I'm, I specialize in playing cranky English judges. I have Piers Morgan, too. I do Piers Morgan on America's Got Talent, although he's gone now. Mm -hmm. I did Simon Cowell on Idol, and I was Len Goodman on Dancing with the Stars. So much fun. I know. Well, keep the wonder. Oh, Live thank the you. wonder.